we know that there are so many people out there that are concerned about bees and trying to make sure that pollination is happening. So there's a very cool craft well, that something, you can something. do. Uh, and you've made sort of a pollination house. A little pollinator hotel? A little pollinator hotel. Yeah, so here's the deal. Everybody's paying Cute. a lot of attention to our flower gardens and we're planting mm -hmm. uh, flowers that will attract bees and butterflies and that's great. But there are other pollinators out there that are really important. And if you're growing your own vegetable garden, having pollinators near your vegetables is going to give you more produce. I mean, we ah. go to these summer markets, it's, it's full of all these amazing things, and we think, let's grow it ourselves. Yeah. Pollinators are part of that equation. So having them in your garden, right where the, the plants are, where the flowers are blooming, mm -hmm. are going to give you bigger and better produce. Okay. So that's what we're going to do today. But we're going to talk about some of the pollinators that don't get as much attention. Yes. Okay? Mason bees are really important. They actually work harder than honeybees. Now, we've all seen the little bee houses that have these tips of bamboo with the holes in them. Mm -hmm. What the mason bee does is it actually burrows down into the hole, lays an egg, and then it caps it. So the baby bees will, one at a time, come out of each of these tubes. Mm -hmm. So having these bamboo pieces in your pollinator hotel, obviously key. So we're just going to put a bunch of these in. Now, I like doing them right here on the side. Stick them in. This is not complicated. Just put them in. You don't have to have all the tubes with holes either because what will happen, and you want to jam them in there, what will happen is the bees and other pollinators will actually lay nests in between the sticks themselves. Oh, wow. Okay, so they will use all the empty crevices. So you want that like kind of like that. Okay. When in doubt, I always take a rubber mallet and just whack everything Knock in. Them in there. Perfect. The more differential sizes you have, the better it is, because it keeps the birds from getting in and picking out the larva. Mm. Okay, so that's really good. Another thing that we know right now, ladybugs. Yes. Ladybugs are huge in the garden. Ladybugs love grass. Okay. So, taking clippings like this, and I literally just went out with my string trimmer and cut mm -hmm. some of the long grass that was beside our house in the park. Taking this, putting that down into one of the boxes, like this will actually encourage ladybugs. Okay. But then you want to give them a little house. So I like to just take a plain terracotta pot, yeah. hole on the top, okay. and I put it down in here. Now what happens is the terracotta pot holds the grass in place. Yeah. So the birds don't start using it as nesting material. Mm -hmm. The ladybugs, once one starts going in here, they all will start, because it's like they've left a scent trail. Got it. Okay, so they'll all start going into this space. All okay. right, very simple. And they'll, they'll live in there. Yeah, they'll live in there. And why are ladybugs important to the whole process? Ladybugs kill aphids. And okay. aphids are one of the worst for tomatoes and for, you know, okay. some of your uh, lettuces and stuff. Aphids will destroy a whole crop. So you Got don't it. want that. Butterflies. We often mm -hmm. don't think about butterflies as pollinators, but they do a ton of work. Mm. The thing about butterflies is they need vertical spaces. So these okay. are literally just shavings or shards that I bought as part of a campfire starting kit. Perfect. Okay, but because they're all vertical, you put them into the box on the vertical. So yeah. kind of like that. Again, get your rubber mallet out to pound them in. Right. But as you're building it up, you're going to wedge them in like that. What happens is, and you can see here, there's vertical crevices. That's where the butterflies will actually go in, and they go inside those gaps, and that's where they'll over or sleep at night to be protected. Oh, okay, I see. so that's a really simple one. Another thing that I like to do, and this might surprise you a little bit, Tracy, can you yes. pass me some of those egg cartons? Sure. We're going to encourage wasps into our garden. Are we? Now, wasps. <laughs> everybody's like, oh, but wasps okay. sting. They're bad. Wasps are predatory. Mm -hmm. They they are aggressive. But the thing about wasps is they actually will lay their larvae on caterpillars, specifically tomato hornworm, which is one of the worst caterpillars you can ever have because they are vicious. They will attack you, but mm -hmm. they will eat a whole plant overnight. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the wasps will actually lay eggs. Wasps use eggshells and paper cartons to build nests. So by okay. putting them in here, you may actually encourage a nice healthy wasp nest growing in the top of your insect house. Okay? Okay. Will the wasps be predators for anything else that's going on around no, here? No, they want caterpillars because that's okay. what they're laying their eggs in. Okay. And finally, and you've seen it here, we've we've got some of these log pieces. Mm -hmm. Very simple. We're just gonna put them down in. Once they're in place, and I like this one because it sort of holds them in, it's a nice little cap. Yeah. Gonna hammer it in, hold it in, then we're going to drill holes. Now the thing about drilling holes, and you can see on this particular one, I've got different sizes. Yep. You want to mix it up a little bit, but all of your holes should be about an inch to an inch and a half deep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to drill a couple holes here as we're going. And it's not complicated, you're just literally drilling a hole. Going right, well. And you're not going down that far. <laughs> should tighten up my drill bit, you're not going down that far. But this is how you're going to actually make it work for your insects, right? 
And who 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 is that for? This is Who's also for the, the mason bees. Okay. They will lay just the same way as they would in the bamboo posts. Yeah. So very simple to do. Mm -hmm. Putting them down in there. Now there's a couple of things you need to know about this as you're drilling this out. Okay. Yeah. Um, random is better. Don't make it perfect. Don't make it even in straight line patterns. Mm -hmm. They seem to gravitate towards completely randomness, okay? Maybe because they want it, they, it has to seem to be as natural as possible. Exactly. Something that just, they just appeared in earth. Exactly. When you're building your house. Now, I pre-made this one. Mm -hmm. I just used old cedar and some scraps so that I had around nice. the house. I've seen people do this with old doll houses. Lovely. Old bird houses That's where they idea. just take off the front face. Yeah. You don't have to have everything all in at once. You can just pick one or two things that you want to encourage. Mm -hmm. But by group bringing in these four bugs into your garden. A, they are predatory. They yep. eat the bad bugs. B, they will pollinate all of your flowers. So bigger zucchinis, bigger pumpkins. These are the things you want. Yes. And this is something that you can literally go out and collect yourself. Yeah. You don't have to put a lot of effort into it. So simple and it's effective and it looks good at the same time. It really does. I love it. I want it for my Barbies. <laughs> Just joking. Yeah.